The Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2 present Viking Preview with a look at today's Colfax Viking football game. And now, Viking Preview. Good evening and welcome to Viking Preview. Rick Olson here in the NLWN2 studio and we're getting ready to bring you Colfax Viking football. Tonight, the 1-7 Vikings, who are 0-6 in the Dun St. Croix Conference, will wrap up their 2023 season by taking on the 3-5 Kadat Hornets, who are 3-3 in the Dun St. Croix. The Vikings are looking to finish the season with a win, which would be their first conference win since 2019. Meanwhile, the Hornets are looking to bounce back from their 27-6 loss to the Boyceville Bulldogs last Friday. Now coming up in this edition of Viking Preview, we'll take a look at tonight's matchup between the Colfax Vikings and the Kadat Hornets. Then we'll get Coach Joe Baranek's perspective on tonight's game in Coach's Corner. Then we'll send it out to Colfax High School where our broadcast crew will bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's game between the Kadat Hornets and the Colfax Vikings. All that coming up right after this timeout as you're tuned to Viking Preview on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Every day thousands of kids start vaping and I can't let this happen to my kid. So if you want to talk to your kids, you have to get it trending. No, you're doing it wrong. Let's go. Can we talk? Yeah, what's up? Visit talkaboutvaping.org for tips on when and how to have the vape talk. Welcome back to Viking Preview. Tonight, the Vikings will try to gain their first Dun St. Croix Conference win since 2019 by taking on the 3-5 Kadat Hornets, who are 3-3 in the Dun St. Croix Conference. The Vikings are coming off a hard-fought 26-19 loss to the Clear Lake Warriors in a game where the Vikings battled back to tie the game twice before giving up the final touchdown early in the fourth quarter. Even then, the Vikings had a couple of opportunities to move the ball and score, but just couldn't find the end zone. Now, in that game, the Vikings were led through the air by Drew Beekner, who had a quarterback rating of 104.2 by going 3 for 5 for 80 yards. 3 0 Hovde led the way on the ground by going 80 yards on just four carries, including a 64 yard touchdown run to tie the game at seven in the first quarter. Nickel split to the near side. Ralph to the far side. Pitch to Hovde. He's got an opening and he's off and running. Theo Hovde is going to take it to the house. Touchdown Vikings. Right on cue. Well, you called that one, Dan. <laughs> 64 yard touchdown run by Theo Hovde. Hovde also got the second half off to a fast start with a 70-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Back deep to receive the opening kickoff of the second half are Hovde and Beatner for the Vikings. Teeing the ball up, getting ready to kick off is Caleb Dixon for the Warriors. And he approaches the ball and squibs it down the middle of the field, picked up by Hovde at the 30-yard line. He gets across the 35, out to the 40. He's still on his feet and he's off. Theo Hovde is off and running. And Theo Hovde takes it to the house. A 70-yard kickoff return by Theo Hovde. Later in the third quarter, Colton Hoffman tied the game at 19 each with a four-yard run up the middle. Beekner at the line of scrimmage. Anderson in motion. Gives straight up the middle. Hoffman into the end zone. Viking touchdown! And the Vikings have tied the game! On defense, Hovde led the way with 11 total tackles. Drew Beekner, Kate Anderson, and Orion Nichols also contributed with 8, 7, and 6 total tackles, respectively. 
Now, last Friday, the Cadet Hornets dropped a 27-6 loss to the Boyceville Bulldogs. The Hornets had appeared to turn things around following their 0-4 start to the season by running off three consecutive wins, including a 16-8 upset win over previously unbeaten Spring Valley Cardinals two weeks ago. Then, on last Friday, the Hornets scored the first touchdown of the game to take a 6-0 lead, but then could not stop the powerful Boyceville offense, who gained 403 yards while putting up 27 unanswered points to send the Hornets to defeat. Now, based on the most recent statistics we can find for the Hornets so far this season, they are led on the ground by Eastman Goodman, who's averaging about 150 yards per game. Jordan Peters leads the way through the air with a quarterback rating of around 40. Now, his favorite target has been Easton, who averages nearly 50 yards receiving per game. Now, defensively, the Hornets are being led by Peters, Warren Bovey and Wyatt Engel, who average between four and five total tackles per game each. Now, thus far this season, the Vikings are being led on the ground by Drew Beekner with 392 yards on 103 carries for an average of nearly four yards per carry and three touchdowns. He's followed by Colton Hoffman with 390 yards on 69 carries for an average of nearly six yards per carry and three touchdowns. Theo Hovde and Kate Anderson follow with three and two rushing touchdowns, respectively. Through the air, Drew Beatner is 12 for 25 for 188 yards and a touchdown. Orion Nichols is the leading receiver for the Vikings with 10 receptions for 166 yards and two touchdowns. Defensively leading the way for the Vikings is Kate Anderson with 42 total tackles, a sack, and three fumble recoveries. He's followed by Eli Ralph and Drew Beekner, who each have 40 total tackles. Ralph has five tackles for loss and two fumble recoveries. Orion Nichols, Grant Paulus, and Colton Hoffman add another 37, 32, and 30 total tackles, respectively. Now coming up next, I caught up with Coach Joe Beranek at practice a little bit earlier this week, and we'll get his perspective on tonight's game in Coach's Corner. Then Dan and I will bring you all the play-by-play -play action of tonight's game from Colfax. All that coming up right after this timeout as you're tuned to Viking Preview on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. My dad was a farmer. The guy was bigger than life. He wasn't someone that liked to show his emotion or liked to show when he was struggling, but we all struggle. I want to show emotion to my kids. It's something that brings me so much joy, and I want them to see me working through things. Allow your kids to know that it's okay to struggle, that even dad doesn't know the answer sometimes, but we're gonna figure it out together. Time now for Coach's Corner, with a look at today's Viking football game from the coach's point of view. Now, Coach's Corner. Once again, we're talking with Viking head coach Joe Beranek. And Joe, this week, the Vikings are going to wrap up the season by taking on the Kadat Hornets in a Dun St. Croix matchup. But first, let's take a quick look back at last week's game with the Clear Lake Warriors. And the Vikings had their chances finally dropping the game 26 to 19 your comments about that one uh yeah we were just uh, a little too streaky on friday night i'd say um moments of goodness and then moments of bad things too so uh again i don't like a broken record but cleaning up our mistakes going into this friday and uh you know, working on being more consistent and putting our game all the way together. Talked about it all year now and uh flashes of it. Now we just need to put a four quarter game together. And in watching this team all season long, as the season progressed, they kept getting closer and closer and closer to putting that W in the right column there. But 
maybe you could talk about the progress this team has made over the season. Yeah, and, and certainly you can see the needle moving in the right direction, especially the last four weeks. Uh, you know, kind of. <laughs> I'm kind of getting sick of it, but it's nice to hear that a lot of people come up and tell you, you know, it's a fun team to watch. They're right there. They're so close. They're so close to breaking through. And we feel it, too. And you want it so bad for them. So uh, I think they recognize that, too, and uh, are certainly ready to put some W's in there. And, and this is a good start. Push us into next year, hopefully. Now, Hall of Fame guard for the Green Bay Packers, Jerry Kramer, said in his book, Instant Replay, about the Packers of the 60s that... I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, the Packers never lost a game. The clock just ran out. And that's pretty much what happened on that on that game last Friday. Uh, they had the ball. I just didn't have enough time. Your thoughts? Yeah, that's that's just the way she goes. We uh, They held the ball for a long time. Give them credit over there in Clear Lake. They, uh, they did a nice job of, of taking the time and, and running it down pretty well on us. Um, but we did squander a lot of possessions as well. Uh, I think capitalizing, again, cleaning up some of our mistakes, turn the ball over a couple times, uh, you know, and don't capitalize. That's that's what's going to happen. You're going to run out of time. Yeah, it hurts when you shoot yourself in the foot. Correct, yeah. That's what we talk about all, all week long is, is ball security, uh, especially in the backfield. So need to clean that up. So tonight the Vikings are going to take on the 3-5 and five Kadot Hornets, who are 3-3 three and three in the Dunn St. Croix Conference. Now, they're coming off a 27-6 loss to the Boysville Bulldogs, but they had put a winning streak together prior to that. What can you tell us about the Hornets? Uh, yeah, always well coached, always hard-nosed. Uh, that's what you're going to get from Kadat always. So uh, definitely need to, again, come with a good plan, uh, game plan coming in this week. Uh, realize that, hey, we have a good chance to play spoiler. I think uh, fourth conference win put them in the playoffs. So uh, we come out and play spoiler, have some fun on Friday night, and I think some good things will happen. Now, it appears as though Eastman Good Goodman of the Hornets, or Easton Goodman of the Hornets, it accounts for most of their rushing and receiving yards. What is it that's so special about him that makes him so unstoppable? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they realize they got a good ball player on hand and, and get the way to uh, find a good way to put the ball in his hand. So uh, just understanding where he is on the field and understanding that we need to play within our scheme as well. So uh, trying to, to game plan around and taking him out. Any updates on the injury front for the Vikings? Uh, I think we come out of the last week feeling pretty good. Um, we should be almost full strength coming into this week. It was a good time to do it, the last game of the week, or the last game of the year anyway. So, Well, thank you for joining us tonight on Coach's Corner, and thank you for joining us all season long and giving us the your insight into the Vikings. And good luck on tonight's game. Coming up next, we have more Viking preview. You have been tuned to Coach's Corner with a look at today's Colfax Viking game from the coach's point of view. Stay tuned. More Viking preview is coming right up. back to Viking Preview. Tonight we have the Vikings taking on the Kadat Hornets in a Dun St. Croix Conference matchup. So let's take a quick look around the Dun St. Croix Conference to see where things stand. Last Friday, in addition to the Vikings being defeated by the Clear Lake Warriors 26 to 19 and the Hornets being defeated by the Boysville Bulldogs 27 to 6, we find the Spring Valley Cardinals edging out the Elmwood Plum City Wolves 27 to 22 and the Glenwood City Hilltoppers defeated the Turtle Lake Lakers 34 to 7. Now that leaves the conference standings as follows. The Boysville Bulldogs are still all alone in first place at 6 and 0, while the Spring Valley Cardinals remain in second place with a 5 and 1 record just one game back. Tied for third place at 3-3 three and three, and three games off the pace are the Kadat Hornets, the Elmwood Plum City Wolves, and the Glenwood City Hilltoppers. Tied in sixth place, four games out at 2-4 and four are the Clear Lake Warriors and the Turtle Lake Lakers, while the Vikings are six games back. Tonight, the Vikings would like to secure their first conference win since 2019. 
These two teams met last season with the Hornets coming out on top 35-6. to six. A win for the Hornets tonight would keep them eligible for the WIAA playoffs, which begin next week. The Vikings have strung together four weeks of football where they have come close and would like to conclude the season by pushing the score over the top and securing that elusive win. So it all adds up to some exciting high school football action right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Now in just a few moments, we'll send it out to our broadcast crew at Colfax High School where we'll have all the play-by-play -play action for you coming up next. Now you've been tuned to Viking Preview on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. You have been tuned to Viking Preview on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Stay tuned. Coming up next is live Colfax Viking football. It happens to everyone eventually. Your computer goes on the fritz. Fear not. Slayton's Technology Services can help. When your computer decides to not cooperate, it can be very frustrating. Let Slayton's Technology Services keep you from wanting to drive your computer right off a cliff. Slayton's Technology Services supports business of all sizes. They offer assistance with managed anti malware, encrypted email, fast tech support, data backup, and recovery, and more. Call Slayton's Technology Services at 715-864-2833 and get the IT help you desire. Slayton's Technology Services is the official IT service for the Northern Light Webcasting Network. In November of 2018, our daughter Jaina passed away. The outpouring of support was unbelievable. The support that we received inspired us to start a foundation called the Jaina Kelly Memorial Foundation. And through that foundation, we've given back in a lot of different ways, through projects, through different other charities that we've supported. We like to help the Maine Association and uh, Ronald McDonald House is something that's very near and dear to us. We've also recently, this last year, we, we actually built a tiny house. It's really exciting to be able to give back in different ways. To learn more or to help financially would find us on Facebook or www.janakelly.com. The Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2 along with Colfax High School now bring you Colfax Viking football. Follow the Vikings all season long as they battle their way through the Young St. Croix Conference. Now it's out to the stadium for Colfax Viking football. And good evening and welcome to the Lee Beerquist Athletic Complex at Colfax High School as it's senior night for the Colfax Vikings as they are getting ready to take on the Kadat Hornets on a little bit chilly, blustery, rain-threatening night. It's not raining right now, but we had a few sprinkles earlier. And uh, Dan, if you want to go through the starting lineups for tonight's game, why don't we go ahead and do that. Yeah, here's the starters for the Kanat Hornets. They're going to go with junior number two, Warren Bovey. Senior number three, Jordan Peters. Senior number 20, Easton Goodman. Senior number 23, Nolan Blum. Senior number 28, Connor Roth. Senior number 70, White Engel. Senior number 75, Cole Malaki. Senior number 85, Brendan Sikora. And senior number 56, Axel Teagles. Yeah, you forgot uh, senior number 52, Brody Burrish, and senior number 61, Nolan Nordrum. <laughs> you, you forgot yeah. about the middle column there, Dan. Yeah, I haven't seen a team with this many players in a while. For the Colfax Vikings, they're going to go with number two, Theo Hovde, senior number three, Eli Ralph, a junior number six, Drew Beatner, sophomore 
Number 10, Ryan Nichols. Senior, number 11, Colton Hoffman. Senior, number 22, Cade Anderson. Sophomore, number 53, Grant Paulus. Senior, number 54, Drake Knudsen. Senior, number 66, Cameron Molina. Number 70, senior, Christian Ebert. And freshman, number 72, Grant Cook. Yeah, Grant Cook is one of those freshmen who uh, has shown a lot of promise uh, for those young upcoming freshmen that uh, give some encouragement to the Vikings for upcoming seasons. Hey, while we're at it, why don't you give us the lineup for that team in the zebra stripes? Oh yeah, can't forget about our officials here tonight. That would be, our back judge tonight will be Nick Murdott. The referee will be Josh Kuhn. The headlinesman will be Rich Schultz. The line judge will be Ken Holleran. And our umpire will be Marcus Wilhelm. Yeah, Marcus Wilhelm. Okay, so they're all under the command of Josh Kuhn, the referee. He's the white hat. And both teams are kind of huddled up by their end zones and getting ready for the public address system starting lineup and national anthem and so on. And while we get ready for that to happen, we're going to take a quick time out as you're tuned to Viking football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Looking for a team approach to managing your finances? With over 70 years of experience and 12 locations, Derry State Bank has built a reputation for helpful customer service and support. While our service ethic is old-fashioned, our products and services are not. We offer a full range of loan programs as well as online banking, mobile banking, mobile deposit, and transaction alerts to fit your busy lifestyle. Dairy State Bank, banking on relationships, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. My character Shazam knows all about growing up in a family full of teenage superheroes. They're bold. Where's everyone going? To fight crime. Okay. Adventurous. Shazam! There's never a dull moment. Ah! And no matter what happens, they'll always have your back. All they need is a place to grow and be themselves. And the best part is, you don't have to be a superhero to adopt a teen. Learn more about adopting a teen from foster care. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. You can't imagine the reward. Are your animals feeling a little under the weather? Give the nice folks at Colfax Animal Hospital a call. Austin and Nikki Pritchard are just what the doctor ordered. In fact, they are the doctors and they're ready to help. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. Give them a call at 715-962-3380. And we're back here at Colfax High School. And again, we're getting ready for the starting lineups from the public address system. Real quick, Dan, you were taking a look at the information that we have for the Kadat Hornets, and what did you see? <laughs> well, I see a lot of run. The only difference is when I was watching them warm up, they were actually passing the ball quite a bit. And I noticed <laughs> last I noticed last week's game, I said the same thing at the beginning, that the other team is going to run the ball, and they came out, and I think they probably passed 20 times. So... I would guess with the playoffs coming up, Kadat, you know, they're trying to make a little name yet in the conference playoffs, and uh, they got to make sure that their offense is, what do I want to say, spread out, you know, that kind of can run the ball, can pass the ball, you know, do things that can get them deeper into the playoffs. And I think we're headed for a good one tonight. Uh, the Vikings coming off that 26 to 19 loss to the. Uh, Clear Lake Warriors and it was a close game came down to the final drive of the game and the Hornets coming all coming off a 27 to 6 loss to the Boyceville Bulldogs 
And now we're going to turn it over to the public address system and find out all the things they have to say about tonight's game. Senior, Katie Anderson. Number 
34 senior, Drake Knudsen. Number 66 senior, Cameron Molina. And number 70 senior, Christian Eberts. Let's hear one more time for your seniors. It's senior night here at Colfax, and that's why we had an all-senior starting lineup announced. Those, once again, were the seniors playing their final game here at Colfax High School are Eli Ralph and Grayson Decker, Matt Dockel, Colton Hoffman, Kate Anderson, Drake Knudsen, Cameron Molina, and Christian Ebert. And Dan, we almost had a perfect season this year of not catching the coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> I think we got one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it's going to be the Kadat Hornets kicking off to the Vikings. Yeah, we'll probably have to do some preseason training next year on that. Huh? <laughs> and let's see, it's Brody Burrish, I believe. No, it's not. It's, I don't have a 58. So we'll have to see who that's going to be at. Back deep for the Vikings are Hovde and Beekner. And the kicker approaches and kicks it away. It's heading toward the sideline. And it goes out of bounds. It went out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. So that's, of course, a penalty. And it'll move the ball out to the 35 yard line. Unless the Vikings want them to re kick. And I think I heard coaches saying re kick, re kick. And that's what they're going to do. Now the yeah. scoreboard clock should still say 12 minutes because it should not have started. Kind of a crosswind tonight. It's not end zone to end zone. It's kind of kitty wampus across the field. Yeah, and it's not always the same. It's kind of switching things around on us. All right, so we'll try it again. This time from the 35 yard line. And he approaches, swings the leg. This one's down more towards the center. And again, it goes out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. And I think the Vikings are gonna want them to kick it again. Yeah, Colfax special teams has been one of their bright moments this season. So now they'll be kicking from the 30 yard line. Well, they got the scoreboard clock fixed to say 12 minutes. If I was Kadat, I'd do an onside kick. Catch Colfax off guard. He's got to adjust his front sight a little bit. This one's right down the middle. Hovde grabs it at about the 28 yard line. He's out across the 40 and gets wrapped up there and they should give him about the 40 yard line for forward progress. And they're gonna put it at the 38 yard line. I don't think they gave him the forward progress that he had because he was clearly up to the 40. But at any rate, the Vikings are going to have it first and 10 at their own 38. Vikings at the line of scrimmage. Hoffman in the backfield. Beekner gives it to Hoffman, and he got hit right at the line of scrimmage. No gain. He ran right into a brick wall. Second down, 10. 
Yeah, they moved it out to about the 39 yard line now. So we'll make it second and nine. And they give to Hovde, and he cuts it up the middle and gets across the 40 to about the 41 yard line. Gain of two. It's going to be third down and about eight. Well, we got a player down. Oh, we, got we have two, two players play. down for Colfax. One is Grant Paulus, and I can't tell who the other one is. Drake Knutson, I believe. And neither one of them is moving. They got tangled up in that pile. 53 is getting up. So Grant Paulus is up. The field. And checking into the lineup for the Vikings is Brady Elmer. And 62. Uh, Zach Learmo. And as they take care of it, why don't we take a timeout? This looks like it could take a minute or so. And we'll take a timeout. And you're tuned to Viking Football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. The Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV is excited to once again be your host for Colfax High School Girls Basketball throughout the 2023-2024 through 2024 season. <laughs> Our first game will be on Tuesday, November 14th, when the Vikings play host to the Regis Ramblers. Live coverage on the Northern Light Webcasting Network audio service and on NLWN TV begins with Viking pregame game at 6.40 p.m. That's live Colfax Viking Girls Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV on Tuesday, November 14th. When you have that craving for a home-cooked meal the way mom used to make it, rest assured, you can still get that meal by going to Mom's Restaurant and Pub in Colfax. Mom's is open daily serving breakfast and lunch and don't forget dinner on Friday nights with Mom's famous fish fry. The coffee is always hot, the breakfast is always delicious and lunch will put a smile on your face and in your stomach. 225 Bremer Avenue, Colfax. Call 715-962-4617. That's Mom's Restaurant and Pub. It's getting to that time of year again. Time for the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV to present our Halloween Spooktacular 2023. Join us at 7 p.m. on Halloween night by the light of the jack-o'-lantern as we bring you some of the best in Halloween-themed old-time radio programs, including The Life of Riley, yours truly Johnny Dollar, Richard Diamond, Private Detective, and Suspense. So join me and a friend of mine as we party hardy on our Halloween spectacular at 7 p.m. Halloween night on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. And one of the spooky things at this time of year is seeing a player lay on the field as long as Drake Knutson was, but he's coming off the field with some help. Very gingerly on his leg. In fact, in such a way, I can't tell which one's hurt. Yeah. Third down eight for the Vikings. Cameron Molina moves over to center. Anderson in motion. And the snap to Beekner is dropped, and he fell on it. It's going to bring up fourth and ten. Yeah, and we might see a little bit of that. The rain is starting to fall. As it is. It's what we call a mom and dad game here. That's who's going to show up for a game in this kind of weather conditions. And we have a pretty good representation of them here. Vikings in punt formation. Hoffman back to do the punting. Snap. And the kick gets off the side of his foot. And it's going to land at about the Viking 45-yard line. And what a five-yard. 
it, well, it's not even to the 45. They, they're going to say the official on the near side here is insisting that it went out of bounds at the 40. That's a six That's yard. about a two-yard punt. Two-yard. So, first and ten for it, the Hornets. In his defense, the wind did pick up in that direction. Jordan Peters in the shotgun formation. Snap to Peters. He gives it to Goodman, who gets it off the left side and then cuts back to the, or off the right side and cuts back to the left. And he gets it down to the 31 yard line. Hornets up to the line. Peters gives it to Goodman again, going off the right side. He turns, he cuts across the 25, down to the, about the 22-yard line. And it's going to be a first down for the Hornets. Tackled by 22, Kate Anderson, and number seven, Matt Dockel. Peters brings them up to the line. And again, the give to Eastman going off the right side. He gets the corner turned, heads towards the end zone and into the end zone for the Kadat touchdown. Yeah, just found the seam off the right side. And the Kadat Hornets take a six to nothing lead with 9.15 remaining in the first quarter. Hornets going to go for two. Direct snap that time, and he did not get it into the end zone. The snap was to Connor Roth, and he did not get into the end zone, so the score remains. Kadat six, and the Vikings nothing as you're tuned to Viking football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. To get your lawn or garden to perform and attracting what you want, you first need to know what your soil is working with. That's where Midwest Environmental Consultants can help. Their soil testing service can give you a complete rundown on your soil's nutrition and health. They test for nitrogen levels, phosphorus, potash, micronutrients, minerals, pH, and organic matter. Let Midwest Environmental Consultants put you in control of your soil's health. Call Midwest Environmental Consultants at 608-468-2067. That's Midwest Environmental Consultants, serving Western Wisconsin. We're back here at the Lee Beerquist Athletic Complex as the Kadat Hornets have opened up a 6 to nothing lead with 9.15 to go in the first quarter. And he approaches the ball and kicks it down the middle. This time, right into Hoffman's hands. He waits for some blocking, and he gets it out to the 40-yard line. So the Vikings will have it first and 10 at the 40. So now the Vikings just have to make sure they get those snaps between Cameron Molina and Drew Beekner clean and then move the ball down the field. Havdi in motion. Beekner keeps it himself and just stretches just beyond the line of scrimmage. They're going to say he lost. He lost a yard. Second and 11. Yeah, we've kind of seen this all season that Colfax, you know, has that tight formation. And uh, I think sometimes it's good to stretch it out and make the defense 
not put nine in the box or ten in the box. Nichols is split out wide to the near side. And taken down in the backfield is Hoffman. They're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 11. And the Vikings come up to the line. Everything's tight. Havdi in motion. Beekner drops back, steps up into the pocket, keeps it himself, takes off with the ball. He's got the first down and more. Gets knocked out of bounds in Hornet territory. They're going to say at the Hornet 45-yard line he stepped out of bounds. But it's a first down for the Vikings. Yeah, good job. Beekner, I don't know if he saw it or not. Cadot was in man, and they kind of took off after their their players that they were covering and left the middle open. Especially if you can get them to turn their back. All right, Vikings at the line. Hovde in motion. Beekner keeps it himself and cuts it across the 45. Maybe he got down to the 44. Got about a yard. Second down nine. Beekner goes into the huddle with the play and here they come up to the line of scrimmage. Steps in under center. Anderson in motion. Beekner keeps it and gets taken down in the backfield. Good job of pressure that time by Wyatt Engel as Beekner gets taken down back in Viking territory at the 47, 48 yard line, 47 yard line. So it's gonna be third down and let's say 18 yards to go. Six twenty remaining in the first quarter. Nickel split wide to the near side. Ralph to the far side. Quick toss out to Nichols. He gets it out across the forty-five to about the forty-nine yard line, where he's taken down. It's going to bring up fourth down and about eleven. Yeah, I like number ten, Ryan Nichols. He's only a sophomore. He's, he knows the game and knows where to be. He's another one of those young talents that are showing some serious promise for the Vikings. Hoffman in punt formation. Snap the kick. He hurried that one and went off the side of his foot again. But it lands and goes inbounds and down by the Vikings at the 31 yard line. So it's going to be first down for the Kadat Hornets at their own 31. Hornets up to the line of scrimmage. Peters in the shotgun. Takes it, gives it, they run a counter, and it goes off the right side. Ball carried by Roth. And he got it across the 30 out to about the 34 yard line. Gain of three, second down seven. Tackle by number 66, senior Cameron Molina. Hornets come up to the line of scrimmage. 
Brandon Sikora split out wide to the right side. And then they give it coming back around to the near side to Bovey on the carry. He gets it across the 35 to about the 38 yard line. It's gonna bring up third down and let's make it three. Yeah, good job by number 22, Keith Anderson. He has shed his block and got the tackle. Hornets up to the line. Peters in the shotgun. They put Roth in motion. They pitch it to him going around the right side. He gets he got hit at the 40, did not go down, and then got hit again back at the 39-yard line. And that's where they're gonna mark it, and it's fourth down. And actually, he's back at the line of scrimmage. Fourth and three. Yeah, big hit there at the the line and cleaned up my number 70, Christian Ebert. Hornets in punt formation. Here's the snap. And he gets the kick away. Nice end over end kick and it's rolling down inside the 20, inside the 15. And it's gonna be downed at about the 12 yard line. We and that's where the Vikings are gonna take over yeah, first we got down. A we got a penalty at the 15. Oh, we do. And it's a penalty is against the Hornets. Now let's see, this is a personal foul. So they should walk it up 15, And it's right? being marked off at the end of the kick. So it's a personal foul against the Hornets. And it moves the ball out to the 26 yard line. Officials were having a chat with Brody Burrish for the Hornets. I wonder if he was the one the penalty was against. He was explaining what happened. They give to Hovde and he got met trying to cut back up through the line of scrimmage. Yeah, big hit there by number 76. Cole Mac Malaki. And they're gonna say Hovde lost a yard. Second down, 11. Second down, 11. Anderson in motion. And it's a pitch to Anderson trying to get around the left side and he can't miss the corner. Gets taken down from behind back around the 24 four yard line or thereabouts 23 yard line so third and 14 nickel split out to the near side Ralph to the far side Beekner dropping back and gets taken down quickly. And coming through that line like a hot knife through butter was Mitchell Reinecke. Beekner did not even have a chance to set his feet to try and throw the ball. Reinecke was dragging him down by the belt. Minute 38 to go in the quarter. Hoffman in punt formation. Let's see if he gets one that's not off the side of his foot. And the Vikings are going to take timeout. So with a timeout on the field, we'll take one just as well on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Let Menominee Eye and Optical help you see the world for the beautiful place it is. Doctors Nicholas and Marianne Conroe provide both comprehensive and emergency eye care for all, including pediatric and special needs patients. Whether it's examination for glasses to cataract and LASIK care, or diagnosis and management of macular degeneration, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, and so much more. In addition, Menominee Eye and Optical's experienced opticians will help guide 
provide you to the highest quality eye care for the best value. That's Menominee Eye and Optical located at 520 Wilson Avenue in Menominee where they specialize in quality personalized care for you and your family. Colton Hoffman back in punt formation. Back deep is Goodman and Roth for the Hornets. Here's a snap. It's over Hoffman's head. Rolls out of the end zone. And that's going to be a safety. That'll make the score. The Hornets eight and the Vikings zero. And that means the Vikings will have a free kick. Yeah, and the wind's picked up, and it's Vikings got a kick into the wind. So Vikings getting ready for a free kick. Cameron Molina tees the ball up. He approaches, swings the leg. Drives it down to about the 40-yard line where it's caught and returned across the 45 and met at about the 47-yard line is Nolan Blum on the return. Gang tackle leading that was number three, Eli Ralph for Colfax. So first and 10 for the Hornets at their own 47-yard line. Coming up on a minute to play in the first quarter. Snap, give to Goodman going around the right end. He came from the slot and took it around the right end across the 50 down to the 48 yard line of the Vikings. It's gonna be a gain of four. Second down six. Kate Anderson on the tackle for the Vikings. Peters in the shotgun, takes a snap, gives it straight up the middle to Bovey this time, and he gets it down across the 40 to the 38-yard line, and that's going to be a first down for the Hornets. Warren Bovey on the carry. Now they're up to the line. Peters waiting for the snap. Gives it to Roth on the counter play and he gets it down to the 30. They're running a lot of crossing action. They had Goodman coming from the right side circling around to the left. They faked the handoff to him and gave it to Roth cutting back to the right coming from the left side. And it's going to bring up second down two at the end of quarter number one. And you're tuned to Viking Football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. The Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2 are excited to once again be your host for exciting Colfax High School boys basketball throughout the 2023 through 2024 basketball season. This is what we came in for. Our next game will be on Tuesday, November 21st, 
when the Vikings will host the Somerset Spartans as part one of a boys then girls doubleheader. Live coverage on the Northern Light Webcasting Network audio service and on NLWN2 begins with Viking pregame at 5.15 p.m. That's live Colfax Viking Boys Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2 on Tuesday, November 21st. How about that, Dan? Just about a month from Viking basketball, both boys and girls. Yeah, I know you've been waiting for that one. I've been waiting. 365 days, it seems like. <laughs> All right, Hornets at the line of scrimmage, second down two. They are at the Viking 30-yard line. Goodman in motion, giving it straight up the middle, and there's a bit of a hole there. And taken down at the 25-yard line is Warren Bovey. Tripped up by number 11, Colton Hoffman, for the Vikings. First and 10 for the Hornets. Hornets come up to the line. Jackson Barron is in as the wide receiver right now. Goodman in motion. They pitch it to Goodman going around the left side and he changes direction as he got over by the sideline. Got it across the 20 down to the 18 yard line. That's going to bring up a second down and about three yards to go. Keith Anderson on the tackle for Colfax. There's a snap and they give it to Goodman coming around the right side. Does it gives a stiff arm but taking him down is Theo Hovde coming up from his cornerback spot and Goodman tried to stiff arm him and Hovde snuck underneath it and grabbed onto Goodman's legs took him down for a loss they're back at the 22 yard line brings up third and seven Textbook tackle there by Hovde that's where his Experience as a wrestler comes in to pay off. Hornets at the line of scrimmage. Peters gives it to Goodman going off the left side. Gets the corner turn, cuts back, and he gets it down to about the five yard line where he's finally taken down. Hovde and Ralph in on the tackle. Nine fifty-four remaining in the first half. Hornets are threatening. They lead eight to nothing. Hornets at the line of scrimmage. Give to Goodman going off the left side. Gets it across the five down to about the three yard line. Second and goal from the three. Baron over to the near side. But they give straight up the middle, and did he get in? Yes. Into the end zone for a touchdown. Warren Bovey on the carry, and that'll make it 14 for the Hornets, and Vikings have yet to find pay dirt. Hornets going for two. 
Peters drops back, looks out into the end zone, and the pass is incomplete. It was intended for Brandon Sikora, and the score is going to remain. The Kadat Hornets 14, and the Vikings nothing on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. Back here at Colfax High School. As the Hornets have opened up a 14 to nothing lead. And whoever number 58 is, we don't know. And he does a squib kick and the Vikings fall on it at about the 43 yard line. Now we have somebody slow getting up for the Vikings. 72 recovers the ball for Colfax. It's Grant Cook, but he's not the player down. No, it's, uh, I think it's Brady Elmer who's down. Yep, it's Brady Elmer down on the field. So while they get that sorted out, we'll take this time out on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Put a frog in a pot of boiling water and it'll jump right out. But put a frog in a pot of cool water and slowly heat it up and that frog will boil. As veterans, we can tell ourselves the lie that it's easier to stay in that boiling water, to disconnect. But you've never been interested in easy. You are not a frog. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. I tell my son, I love you every single day. Oh. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me, but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. Now that he's a grandfather, he says I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious moment. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. And they're still tending to the injured player on the field. Let's run through the scoring so far as the Kadat Hornets have a 14 to nothing lead over the Vikings. They opened up the scoring with a 22 yard run by Connor Roth at 9.15 to go in the first quarter. Extra point was no good and so the score was six to nothing. Then with 126 remaining in the quarter, the Vikings had the ball deep in their own territory on fourth down. The snap went over Hoffman's head and out of the end zone for a safety, making the score Kadat's eight 
and the Vikings nothing. Then in the second quarter, um, just a couple moments ago, uh, there was a three-yard run by Warren Bovey, and that extra point was no good, so that made the score Kadat Hornets 14 and the Vikings nothing. Then on the ensuing kickoff, they tried what looked like an attempt at an onside kick, and two Vikings dove after it. One got up, uh, Grant Cook recovered the kick, and uh, Brady Elmer is still being treated to on the field. And while they still work with him, we'll take another timeout. As you're tuned to Viking Football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN. Regardless of where you are on your path to retirement, you can still take charge of your financial future today. Visit aceyourretirement.org and answer a few questions from Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. For free tips, resources, and advice customized for your situation to help you feel confident and prepared for retirement. Retirement looks different for everyone. Make sure you're prepared for your financial future at aceyourretirement.org. And they've got him up on his feet. And we're waiting to see him start to move off the field. And so Brady Elmer coming off the field. With a lot of assistance from coaches and trainers. And the Vikings have the ball. Now first down, first and 10 at their own 43 yard line. Vikings at the line of scrimmage. Anderson in motion. Beekner keeps it himself. Tries to take it up off tackle and got met right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Yeah, Cole, number six, Cole Malaki. He's making some big hits tonight. So second down. We'll say he lost about a half a yard. Vikings at the line. Hovde in motion, pitch to Hovde. Tries to get around the outside. He got met in the backfield and taken down at about the 40 yard line. It's gonna be a loss of about three. Third down and about 13. Hornets have evidently prepared for Hovde around the end. Vikings up at the line. They've spread things out a little bit this time. Quick throw out into the flat to Anderson. He gets across the 40 and taken down by the shoulder pads at about the original line of scrimmage, the 43 yard line. Easton Goodman on the tackle for Kadat. Gonna bring up fourth and ten. Hoffman back in punt formation. Goodman and Roth back deep to receive. Hoffman takes a snap. Gets the kick away, short end over end, right down the middle. Takes a Viking bounce and rolls down across the 25 to the 24 yard line where the Vikings down it. And it's gonna be first down for the Hornets at their own 24 yard line. 
six minutes and 34 seconds to go. Fourteen to nothing. Hornets lead the Vikings. Six thirty-four to go in the first half. Peters in the shotgun takes a snap, gives it to Goodman going around the left side, and he turns the corner, gets it out across the thirty-five, and he's taken down at about the thirty-eight yard line. That's enough for a first down. Hornets at the line. They give it on that counter play to, uh, to Bovey and he gets that out across the 40 to about the 42. Yeah, I think it's about 42 is where they're going to spot it. Pick up a five, second down five. Yeah, that's kind of a big series right here. Colfax is going to stop them. They can get the ball back for halftime. Peters. Gives it to Roth coming around the near side. He got met right at the line of scrimmage for little, if any, gain. Maybe even a little bit of a loss. Nichols has to come off. For... Looks like he might have turned an ankle or something. 53 goes out for him. Grant Paulus. Peters looking downfield, he's got his receiver, and he's down to the 30. He's across the 25, and nobody's going to catch him as he takes it into the end zone, and that's Nolan Blum on the reception. And no flags. Yeah. And that'll make the Hornets take a 20 to nothing lead over the Vikings. Yeah, good job by the Kadat quarterback. He knew he was going to get hit, and he got hit hard as he threw it. Still made the completion. Blum caught the ball in traffic, broke a couple of tackles to take it to the house. Give to Goodman, going around the left side. He takes it into the end zone for the two-point conversion. So the score with 4.42 to go in the first half, it's Kadat 22 and the Vikings nothing on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. If you're buzzed and doing this... to make yourself feel okay to drive... ZWX... You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Kadat Hornets getting ready to kick off to the Vikings after taking a 22 to nothing lead on a 53 yard touchdown pass from Peters to Blum. And the kick comes down to Beekner. He's out across the 25. Stutters, goes to the 30, to the 35, and run out of bounds, just shy of the 40. 39-yard line, and it's going to be first down for the Vikings right there. Yeah. 
Well, they say that the game can be decided based on which side of the ball the pressure is, and it's definitely the Hornets are getting across the line and putting the pressure on the Vikings. They give the ball up the middle, and, or Beekner keeps it himself up the middle and lost about two yards, well, maybe a yard. Second down and 11. Vikings come up to the line. And the pitch to Hovde going around the right side. He's got some room. He's down across the 50 to the 45 and taken down at about the 42 yard line. Theo Hovde on the carry. They're going to mark it on the 43. First and 10. Got yeah, a good job by the Colfax right side to seal it off and let him get the corner. And a gift straight up the middle this time. And driving down across the 40 to the 38 yard line. That was Colton Hoffman. Gain of five, second down five. Five yard gain, second and five. Ball now on the 39. Just under three minutes to go in the first half. And a pitch to Hovde. He's got the corner turned on the right side. Gets it down across the 25 and taken down at about the 23 yard line. Theo Hovde on the carry. Yeah, he's probably the fastest kid, kid on the Colfax offense right now. Him and Kate Anderson. Avdi in the left slot, Anderson in the right. Anderson goes in motion. Gives straight up the middle to Hoffman and he drives forward across the 20. And they're gonna say he's down at about the 19. Second down and a long four. Two minutes remaining in the half. Hovde in motion. Give to Hoffman. Fumble. Fumble, lost the ball and fallen on by the Hornets. Let's see if they call him down by contact. They may have called him down, you're right. They, yep, they're saying turnover to the Hornets. So first and 10 for Kadat at their own 21 yard line. Hornets at the line. Peters in the shotgun. And they give it on the counter play again. This is again Bovey, and he gets it out near the 30 yard line. They're gonna mark him down at the 28, I believe. Maybe even the 27. Second down four, or five. Hornets back up to the line. 
Goodman coming around the near side, gets the corner turned, and now he breaks a couple tackles and gets out to about the 40 yard line. They're gonna mark him at the 38, but that's enough for a first down. Grant Cook on the tackle for Colfax. Boy, Dan, I'm sure glad we brought this awning to be underneath. A lot yeah, of pitter-patter on there. For a while there, it was just kind of a little mess, but it's starting just to fall directly down now. And he gets straight up the middle and met at the line of scrimmage. Gain of maybe a yard. That was Bovey again, and it's going to bring up second down nine. 45 seconds remaining in the half. Roth goes out. And Bremnis came in. Quick toss over the middle and he's got his receiver again. Only this time he's getting taken down at the 43 yard line of the Vikings. That pass was completed again to Nolan Blum. 17 seconds remaining in the half and a timeout being called by the Kadat Hornets. So with 17 seconds remaining, it's Kadat 22, the Vikings nothing on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, CWX. Ah. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular U. 17.1 seconds remaining. And the snap to Peters, a runner reverse. Heading around the left side, this is Bremnus. And he gets taken down at about the 22 yard line. We'll have to take a time out. And since he got knocked out of bounds, clock stops with 9.3 seconds remaining. Kate Anderson on the tackle for the Vikings. And it looks like Kadat might have called a timeout there. I'm sure the Vikings didn't. The Hornets at the line of scrimmage. And they're going to try the halfback pass. It's intercepted by the Vikings. Heading back upfield. This is Beekner, and he gets run out of bounds at about the 33 yard line. And that will cap off the first half. So coming up in just a couple moments, we have Viking halftime. And during half, Viking halftime, of course, we'll have a Viking profile. And today's Viking profile will be Theo Hovde. And that's all coming up right after this on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Time now for Viking Halftime with this week's Viking Profile and other Halftime Entertainment.
if you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Time now for Viking Profile, where we get to know one of this season's Colfax Viking players. And now Viking Profile. Today on Viking Profile, we're talking with Theo Hovde, who is a junior here at Colfax High School. And Theo, we know that you play football, but are you involved in any other activities here at school? Uh, yeah, I'm in the play, um, as well as a little bit of cross country here and there when I can, and then uh, wrestling and track. Okay, so when did you start playing football, and what kind of an experience has that been for you? Um, I mean, it's been great. I started freshman year um, before that, and that was uh, with pads. I played eighth grade as well, but then all the way through on up, I played flag football, and it's just been, it's been a great opportunity. I love every moment of it. So what's the most important thing you've learned from playing football? Uh, Got to have that physical and mental toughness to be able to move as a team and get the ball down the field. And when you're not playing football or you're not here at school, what are some other things that keep you interested or occupied? Um, well, I love spending time with family. Um, love going for walks with them and throwing the football around with them, doing tons of fun stuff like that. Okay. All right. You know this is coming. Pie, ice cream, cake, or cookies? All of them. <laughs> All of them? All of them, yeah. <laughs> okay. How about burgers, brats, or hot dogs? Burgers. And what do you want on that burger? Ooh, give me some pickles, mustard, ketchup, lettuce, and I mean, if it's a curd burger, throw some cheese curds on there, too. All right, all right. That's a, that sounds real tasty, yeah. in fact. All right, favorite NFL team? Uh, Packers. And favorite collegiate team? Badgers. All right, now, if Theo had a superpower, what do you think that superpower would be and why? Definitely super speed. I like uh, I like getting places quickly, and I definitely think that would help me out on the football field as well. So more than you already have? A lot more, a lot more. <laughs> okay. And, of course, if you have super speed as your superpower, you have to have a superhero name to go with it. So what would Theo Hovde's superhero name be? Ooh... The Speedster? I don't know, Scarlet Speedster? I, I don't, Scarlet I don't Speedster, I don't okay, all right. We're talking with Theo Hovde on Viking Profile. And Theo, what are your plans for after high school? Uh, definitely planning on attending college, playing either probably football or running track and field somewhere. Okay, how about a shout out to the family? Uh, <laughs> thanks, Mom and Dad, for always supporting me at the games, as well as Trey, Tucker, and Ty. Love you guys. And when people come to Viking games, what number do you wear and what position do you play? Um, I'll be playing slot back, wide receiver, um, as well as probably some cornerback, and I'll be wearing number two. All right, we want to thank Theo Hovde for joining us today on Viking Profile. Coming up next, more Viking Halftime. You've been tuned to Viking Profile, where we get to know one of this season's Colfax Viking players. This has been a production of the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Now more Viking Halftime Entertainment. Here's Grandma Florence after that flood wiped out the whole neighborhood. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe. And it's the best way to protect that legacy. Your family is your legacy. Planning for a natural disaster will make sure you're all safe. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today.
Driving. I thought you were driving. Oh, I never said I was driving. I, I definitely can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> if you're high, just don't drive. It's illegal everywhere. If you feel different, you drive different. You've been tuned to Viking Halftime on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Now back to the stadium for second half action. And welcome back to the League Beer Quist, the soggy Lee Beer Quist Athletic Complex here at Colfax High School. It's senior night for the Colfax Vikings, and the Kadat Hornets have a 22 to nothing lead at halftime. And we are just a couple moments away from getting the second half underway. Taking a look back at the uh, Scoring in the first half, it all got underway with 9.15 to go in the first quarter on a 22-yard run by Connor Roth. The extra point attempt was no good, and that put the Hornets on top, six to nothing. Then with 1.26 remaining in the first half, the Vikings had the ball deep in their own territory, and it was fourth down. The snap to Colton Hoffman for the punt attempt, went over his head and out of the end zone for a safety, putting the Hornets on top, eight to nothing. Then in the second quarter, a three yard run by Warren Bovey made the score 14 to nothing with 8.54 remaining in the first half. And then a 53 yard touchdown pass from Jordan Peters to Nolan Blum, and the extra point attempt was good, and that made the score the Kadat Hornets 22, and the Vikings zero, and that's where we are right now as we're getting ready to start the second half. Players are wet, and <laughs> some of them that aren't wearing long sleeves look like they are just downright cold. You can see in the lights across the field right now, the picture that Chris has for us, you can see <laughs> that rain just coming down. And it's coming down hard, and if the weather forecast holds, it's gonna last like this pretty much all weekend. Yeah, so we might as well stay home and watch some of our archive games. <laughs> At least it's not snow, and boy, <laughs> would it be snow if it was. Vikings teeing the ball up to start the second half. 
Let's see, it's not Cameron Molina kicking off. It's Drew Beekner. Back deep to receive for the Hornets are Connor Roth and Easton Goodman. Or check that, it's not Goodman back there. I think it's Ashton Bremnus. Onside Short kick. kick, onside kick attempt, and the Hornets go up high and recover. It was a nice kick in that he got the high hop, but the Hornets were ready for that and leaped up in the air. I believe that was Warren Bovey that went up and got it. So first and 10 for the Hornets at their own 46. Yeah, really, the Vikings are still in this game. If they can get a couple of stops here, they'll be right back in it. Force a turnover in these slippery conditions. Peters waits for the snap, gives it to Eastman going around the left side. He turns the corner, he's across the 50, down to the 45. He's still on his feet to the 40, to the 30, and taken down at the 25-yard line. Take, take it up by number 62. Zach Lermo, freshman for Colfax. So first and 10 for the Hornets at the Viking 25 yard line. And it's a give to Goodman coming around the right side this time. And he gets it down across the 20 and taken down at about the 19-yard line. It's going to be a gain of six, second and four. I think that tackle is by number eight, Peyton Hover. It looks like a zero, but <laughs> I think his jersey just kind of crunched up. Number six it was. Drew Beekner. Peters takes the snap, takes the handoff, looks to throw the ball, it's tapped around and it's caught for a loss by waiting to see his number. Okay, East or Easton Goodman caught the ball right behind the line of scrimmage. That's not what was intended. The ball got tapped straight up in the air. Yeah, big hit by number three, Eli Ralph. And the gift to Goodman going around the left side. He's got the corner turned. He gets down to about the 10 yard line inside the 10. They're gonna mark it at the eight. First and goal from the eight yard line for the Hornets. You know, Dan, it's nice under the awning, but when it comes time to pack things up, we're gonna get wet. <laughs> they run the counter play and coming back across, they gave it to Goodman, then he handed it back off to Bovey Coming back to the left side, and little or no gain. In fact, a loss of about a yard. Second and goal from the nine. Yeah, maybe we should have our staff take everything down. Oh, wait, that's us. That's <laughs> us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the give going around the right side. This is... Goodman again goes towards the goal line but gets taken down at the one. It's going to be third and goal from the one for the Kadat Hornets. Yeah, Grant Paulus for Colfax. Save that touch, touchdown. You know, Dan, I think when we pack up tonight, the last thing we take down is the awning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll make Peters it quick. takes a snap, gives it straight up the middle and into the end zone for a touchdown. That's Ashton Bremnus for the touchdown. With 8.38 remaining.
Hornets going to try for two. Peters gives that counter and He's in. into the end zone. That was Connor Roth taking it into the end zone. And so that makes it the Kadat Hornets 30 and the Vikings nothing. And you're tuned to Viking football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Anderson Bridges, located in Colfax, Wisconsin, has been manufacturing prefabricated steel truss bridges since 1989. With hundreds of bridges supplied nationwide, we suspect you've crossed our path. It may have been on a pedestrian or bicycle bridge, or how about a snowmobile, ATV, or golf course bridge? Anderson Bridges is likely to have manufactured it. Founded in 1989, Anderson Bridges has been a family-owned company since its beginning and are proud to support the Colfax Vikings. Back here at the Lee Beerquist Athletic Complex, 8.38 to go in the third quarter. And the Vikings have Beekner and Hovde back deep to receive. And again, number 58, we still don't know his name. I wonder if it's Alex Teagles, because we have two number 56s on our roster. I'm wondering the same thing. Short kick and taken at the 35 and then hauled down at just about the 40-yard line. And that's going to be Peyton Hover on the return. They're going to mark it at the 37-yard line. Vikings have it first and 10. I think you're right. I think it's probably Alex Teagles. I think that's supposed to be a 58, not a 56. They told us there was a number change. You know what? Usually don't have two number 56s on the, no. on the team. No, and, and we're going to go with that. Anderson in motion, giving it straight up the middle to Hoffman, and he gets it across the 40 out to the 42-yard line. It's going to be a gain of just about five. Kept by senior number 76, Cole Malacky for the Hornets. Second down and a long five. Vikings up to the line. Nichols to the near side. Ralph in the slot. Anderson in motion. They give it up the middle again to Hoffman, and he got met at the line of scrimmage. Loss of about a yard. It's going to bring up third down and six. Yeah, that interior for the Hornets have, haven't given up much yardage. No, tonight. they've been very stiff. Any yardage the Vikings have gotten is to the outside. Receiver split wide both ways. Beekner looks to throw and got hit before he could get rid of the ball and fought his way back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe even a slight gain, fourth down. Hoffman in punt formation. Eastman and Roth back. Or check that. Goodman and Roth are back. Hoffman gets a nice kick away this time. Fair catch called by Goodman. And he makes the catch at the 30-yard line. And it's going to be first down for the Hornets at their own 30. 6.31 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, that was a good kick by Hoffman there. Let's see if uh, the defense or the Vikings can get a stop right here. Hornets up to the line. Oh, 
And they go into a shift. Colfax shows blitz. And they give it to Goodman trying the left side. And he got it across the 30 to about the 31 yard line. Gain of about a yard. Second down nine. Zach Lirimo on the tackle for Colfax. Well, an unfortunate side down on the side. Sign down on the sideline, Drake Knutson is on crutches. Peter, or Goodman carries it, and he's wide open and he's gone. Nobody's gonna catch him. I don't even think Theo Huggy's gonna catch him, although he is gaining. He tripped him up, but not till he got in the end zone. Boy, Theo Hubby gave it everything he had to try to get there. Yeah, but Easton Goodman took it to the house with a 69-yard touchdown run, and Hubby is down. So while they tend to him, we'll take this time out on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. The Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2 are excited to once again be your host for exciting Colfax High School boys basketball throughout the 2023 through 2024 basketball season. This is what we came here for. Our next game will be on Tuesday, November 21st, when the Vikings will host the Somerset Spartans as part one of a boys then girls doubleheader. Live coverage on the Northern Light Webcasting Network audio service and on NLWN2 begins with Viking pregame at 5.15 p.m. That's live Colfax Viking Boys basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2 on Tuesday, November 21st. CNK Construction is your source for high-quality concrete and construction work in the Chippewa Valley. Established in 2014, CNK Construction in Chippewa Falls is a leading concrete contractor proud to serve Eau Claire, Altoona, Menominee, and surrounding areas. Specializing in concrete construction, excavating, flatwork poured walls, and much more, they're right for all of your concrete needs. Call C&K Construction in Chippewa Falls at 715-559-1335. It's getting to that time of year again. Time for the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV to present our Halloween Spooktacular 2023. Join us at 7 p.m. on Halloween night by the light of the Jack O' Lantern as we bring you some of the best in Halloween themed old time radio programs, including The Life of Riley, yours truly Johnny Dollar, Richard Diamond Private Detective, and Suspense. So join me and a friend of mine as we party hardy on our Halloween Spooktacular at 7 p.m. Halloween night on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV. And Theo Hovde coming off the field under his own strength. So now the Hornets will line up to attempt the extra point. After that. 69-yard touchdown run by Easton Goodman. They're at the line. Peters waits for the ball. Looks towards the end zone. Ball got batted down. It's intercepted, and they blew it dead. They don't have the rule in high school where if you return at the distance, you get two points. So, score remains... 36 for the Hornets and Vikings with zero with 550 remaining in the third quarter on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Are your pooch's proportions putting on pounds? Or is your kitty's constitution constantly complaining? Well, stop by and see the friendly folks at the Colfax Animal Hospital. Doctors Austin and Nikki Pritchard and their staff will be happy to help you get your family friend back on the road to healthy living. That's the Colfax Animal Hospital. Call them at 715-962-3380. So the Kadat Hornets getting ready to kick off and we're taking a guess that it's Alex Teagles doing the kicking for the Hornets.
He approaches the ball, swings the leg, drives one deep. Beekner takes it back at the 10 yard line. He's out across the 20 and gets taken down at about the 23 yard line. 22 or 23. And we are now in running time. So first down for the Vikings at the 23 yard line. Five oh two. Well, under five minutes now. Nichols splitting out wide to the near side. Ralph in the slot. Hoffman the setback. Anderson in motion. They pitch it to Anderson coming around the left side. He's still on his feet across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. It's going to be a gain of about eight. You know, you've been mentioned a couple times oh, off the air about the size difference out there, and you could really see it there. They grow them big over there in Kadan. Uh, yeah, that interior for the they're, they're a defense. full head higher, man yeah. to man, on the, in the line. Give straight up the middle, Ralph. Or, Check that Hoffman drives across the 35 to about the 36 or 37 yard line. It's going to be enough for a Viking first down. Yeah, it's important for Colfax to make sure they hold on to the ball in this rain. All right, they put Anderson in motion, pitch it to him, coming to the near side. He's across the 40, he's in the open. He's down across the 40 to the 30. He's down across the 25 and taken down at about the 22 yard line. Kate Anderson with a nice run down to the 22 yard line of the Kadat Hornets. Biggest play of the game for the Vikings. Yeah, good run there by Anderson. You know, they ran two plays here to this near side. You know what I've noticed in the past, they've run a few plays to the outside. Then when they give it to Hoffman up the middle, he actually gets some decent yards. Yeah, if they stay away from that interior three, there should be some lanes open. Vikings at the line. And they give it to Hoffman. No, no. They gave it to Anderson on a counter. He's got the corner turned and taken down at about the three yard line. Kate Anderson takes it around the left side. Connor Roth on the tackle for Kadat. And the Vikings are threatening. Under a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. First and goal from the three. Anderson gets the pitch, tries to turn the corner, and gets back to the line of scrimmage and nothing more. Second down and goal. Teagle's on the tackle for Kadat. Well, this is two years in a row we've had to deal with rain with Kadat. <laughs> yeah. Of course, last year it was severe storms. This year it's just a monsoon, but... Uh, and where are my keys that I lost last year at Kadat? <laughs> <laughs> I got them, I got them. All right. Vikings at the line. Pitch to Hovde, going around the outside, heading toward the pylon, and into the end zone for a Viking touchdown. Theo Hovde with a three-yard run. With 21.2 seconds remaining.
Yeah, I'm not for sure who that was for Colfax. Just gave uh, one defender just enough of a bump for Humpty to make the turn. Get the touchdown. They have trips split out wide to the right. Quick toss, green pass to the right, and it's dropped. Oh, he pass was it. intended for Anderson, and I think the ball was just a little too slippery. So the score remains, Kadat 36, Vikings 6, and you're tuned to Viking football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Looking for a team approach to managing your finances? With over 70 years of experience and 12 locations, Derry State Bank has built a reputation for helpful customer service and support. While our service ethic is old-fashioned, our products and services are not. We offer a full range of loan programs as well as online banking, mobile banking, mobile deposit, and transaction alerts to fit your busy lifestyle. Derry State Bank, banking on relationships, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. Vikings getting ready to kick off. Drew Beekner to do the kicking. Following that three yard touchdown run by Theo Hovde. Making the score, Kadat 36 and the Vikings six. Kadat has some hand players that have moved up and snuck up close. Here's Beekner. Works the onside kick, and it's fielded by Warren Bovey, and he just took it to the ground rather than try to do anything fancy with it with the ball this wet. So first and 10 for the Hornets at their own 42-yard line. Yeah, now if you take a look across the field, Chris doesn't even have to point the camera at the lights. You can see the rain coming down, especially over there on the left side of your screen. Hornets at the line of scrimmage. Give to Goodman going around the left side. And he's got some opening and he's off and running. Hovde takes him down at the 25 yard line. Touchdown saving tackle by Theo Hovde. That's speed versus speed right there. Yeah, the Kadat left side of the line is dominated all night. So first and 10 for the Hornets at the Viking 25 yard line and that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Kadat Hornets 36 and the Vikings 6 and you're tuned to Viking Football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? what? My. Oh. Are you ready to help your family get prepared for the unexpected? Here we go! Ladybug and Cat Noir know how important it is to be ready. Because you never know when Hawk Moth is going to strike or a disaster will hit. And you don't need miraculous powers. Just put those planning skills you already have to good use. Make a plan that will help you and your family be ready when emergencies happen. Ready Kids can help. Get started at ready.gov slash kids. Back here at Colfax High School, getting ready to start the fourth quarter. Kadat has the ball and the 36 to six lead. Peters takes the ball and gives it off the right side to Bobby, who got met right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you know, number three, see, senior Eli Ralph, he just doesn't get a lot of uh, publicity, but 
he is a big part of this team this year for defense. He's got a nose for the ball. He gets he's around that ball or around the play. Second down ten. Peters gives it to Goodman going around the right side. Hovde with an ankle tackle and a loss of about a yard. Maybe two. Yeah, two yard loss where they're spotting it. I'll tell you what, what Theo Hovde lacks in size, he makes up for with heart. He goes out there and plays ball. Heart and speed. He's got some wheels. Third down 12 for the Hornets. Peters gives the ball and he's met in the backfield. That was Goodman getting the ball and I get, believe that was Eli Ralph on that one. Yeah, Colfax gave him on the blitz. Eli Ralph got home first. I enjoy it when a player makes us look right. <laughs> it makes it look like we know what we're talking about. Fourth down and about 16. Peters waiting for the snap. And he gives it coming back this way. And this is Goodman again. He breaks a couple tackles and finally gets dragged down at about the seven yard line and that's gonna be a first down. Saving tackle by number 72, freshman Grant Cook. Grant Cook, another one of those freshmen that, uh, or underclassmen that have bright futures for Viking football. Hornets at the line. Peters takes it himself, going off the right side and taken down by Hovde, just beyond the line of scrimmage. It's gonna bring up second and goal. They're gonna put it, looks like, just outside the five. Nine twenty-four remaining. Goodman taking it around the right side, heading toward the end zone. He didn't get in, he got taken down at about the two. It's gonna bring up third and goal. They're saying it's on the one. I think it's more like the two. Peters waits for the ball. He gets it. They give it straight up the middle. In fact, I think that was a direct snap to the up back. That would signal, yeah. I think he's short. Now it's down around the one. That was carried by Roth. Fourth and goal from the one. And not getting in the end zone that time. The Vikings make a stop. And I believe that was Bremnus that was trying to get into the end zone. And the Vikings slam the door that time and take over on downs. First and 10. Albeit at their own three yard line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job by Colfax to uh, stand up that interior jumbo package there. Cameron Molina in the middle. So the Vikings come up to the line of scrimmage. Can't afford to take a loss or a sack.
Beekner just drives straight ahead and moves the pile. Drew Beekner gets it all the way out to about the 14 yard line and it's gonna be a first down for the Vikings. Really, Colfax has a pretty good front four with Zach Lermo and Cameron Molina. Just maybe a little undersized. Yeah. Vikings at the line. They give up the middle to Hoffman. And he got it across the 15 to about the 16 yard line. Gain of almost two. We'll call it second and eight. So second down eight for the Vikings as they come up to the line. Nickel split to the near side. Hoffman, or not Hoffman, Ralph to the far side. Hubdy in motion, toss to Hubdy. He got hit in the backfield, that slowed him up and held him up enough that Bremnis came in and made the stop for a loss. Yeah, it wasn't a clean pitch. She had to kind of spin around to catch it. And I kind of got the impression he may have been looking to throw that ball oh. on that one too. It looked like he was looking downfield. Coming up on six minutes remaining. We will have a short Viking post-game show following this. Either that or we make it really long and have it go till Monday morning. Hey, Dan, you were telling me we have some out-of-state listener or viewers tonight. Taking the ball around the left side is Anderson. No, Beekner. Yeah. Shout out to our Michigan viewers tonight and some friends down in Tennessee. Thanks for tuning in. So we can color those states off on the map. <laughs> Hoffman back in punt formation. Fourth and 11. Snap, a little bit high. Hoffman gets the kick away. Spiraling kick. And it lands right on the sideline at about the 43 yard line. So they'll, Kadat Hornets will take over. They're going to mark it on the 42. First and 10 for the Kadat Hornets at that point. 503. Hornets at the line of scrimmage. Snap to Peters, gives to Goodman going around the right side. Goodman steps around one person, gets the corner turned, heads towards the end zone, breaks a tackle, and gets taken down at about the 10 yard line. Kate Anderson on the tackle for Colfax. He did a sidestep on Goodman that sent Goodman onto his wallet. And got down to right about the, now they're saying the eight yard line, that could be about right. They're on the far side of the field over there because it's kind of hard to tell. They give up the right side for a short gain. Down to just about the five. Looks from here like they're going to put it right about the five yard line. Second and goal from the five. 
Peters waiting. Takes a snap. Bumble. Drops the ball and he falls on it. Peters tried to make, well he was gonna fake the handoff to coming back to the left side, but uh, as he pulled it back, the ball hit the ground. Yeah, you, I, Ralph was coming on a blitz. You know, Ralph was the first one to get there. 36 to six. Cadot Hornets on top, just over three minutes remaining in the game. Inside 10 seconds to go, five seconds on the play clock. Quick toss over the middle and incomplete. Pass was intended for Nolan Blum. Yeah, he had him wide open and just a little pressure by Colfax made him throw it a little quicker than he wanted, overshot him. Fourth and goal from the 10 yard line. They're going to attempt a field goal, it looks like. And let's see, they're putting it down at about the 16 yard line. Snap, the place, the kick, it's blocked. And it goes out of bounds. So a blocked field goal attempt by the attempt was by the Hornets, blocked by the Vikings, and the score remains. Hornets 36, Vikings 6 on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN 2. In November of 2018, our daughter Jaina passed away. The outpouring of support was unbelievable. The support that we received inspired us to start a foundation called the Jaina Kelly Memorial Foundation. And through that foundation, we've given back in a lot of different ways through projects, through different other charities that we've supported. We like to help the Maine Association and uh, the Ronald McDonald House is something that's very near and dear to us. We've also recently, this last year, we, we actually built a tiny house. It's really exciting to be able to give back in different ways. To learn more or to help financially, we we'll find us on Facebook or www.janakelly.com. So the Vikings have it first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. Beekner, quick toss, and he's got it complete out to Grayson Decker. The senior, first year senior, gets a little bit of action in this game. Yeah. I think I've called his name maybe two or three times all season. Good catcher by the senior. Nice thing to see happen on senior day. Minute 46 remaining. Matt Dockle is in as a wide receiver. And a quick toss to Daco, and it's complete, but uh, his feet went out from under him for a slight loss. It's going to be second down and about 11. Vikings come up to the line. Decker tight on the near side. Quick toss, Eli Ralph with the completion and he gets taken down at the 49 yard line of the Kadat Hornets with 41.4 seconds remaining. Some of these seniors getting some touches on the ball on their last game as a Colfax Viking. First and 10, inside of 30 seconds remaining.
Beekner dropping back, looking to throw, but gets swarmed under back at the 40-yard line of the Vikings, and that's probably going to be the last play of the game. Yeah. Could I read that one really good and got home to Beekner. And that's going to do it. Final score tonight, it's the Kadat Hornets 36, Colfax Vikings 6, and we will have Viking post game coming up right after this timeout. You've been tuned to Viking Football on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. The Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV is excited to once again be your host for Colfax High School Girls Basketball throughout the 2023 to 2024 season. <laughs> Our first game will be on Tuesday, November 14th, when the Vikings play host to the Regis Ramblers. Live coverage on the Northern Light Webcasting Network audio service and on NLWN TV begins with Viking 2 game at 6.40 p.m. That's live Colfax Viking Girls Basketball on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN TV on Tuesday, November 14th. You have been tuned to Colfax Viking Football, live on NLWN 2. This has been a production of the Northern Light Webcasting Network in conjunction with Colfax High School and is intended for the enjoyment of the viewing and listening audience. Any broadcast, rebroadcast, or reproduction in part or in whole without the express written consent of the Northern Light Webcasting Network LLC and Colfax High School is prohibited. Stay tuned. Coming up next is Viking Post Game. How you doing? Hey Mason. Hey Mason. Thank you. I think I found a place to make my own. A place that I call home. This place that I call home. Time now for Viking Post Game with a look back at today's Colfax Viking football game. And now, back out to the stadium and Viking Post Game. And we're back here at a very wet Lee Beerquist Athletic Complex at Colfax High School, and the Vikings come up short on senior night, final game of the season, to the Cadot Hornets by a score of 36 to 6. Dan, your initial thoughts about this one? Yeah, I thought, you know, over the season they've they've learned more stuff, more plays, understood the game. Uh, you know, you can definitely see improvement throughout the season. And um, I think seniors really held this team together this year. Yeah, as, so <laughs> as Dan's getting drowned by water coming off the awning right now. <laughs> yeah, so good job, you know, I would say like Colton Hoffman, uh, Hub D, he did a great job, Eli Ralph, you know, they're kind of, and uh, Cameron Molina, you know, they're kind of the glue that held this team together this year, and uh, definitely see the underclassmen coming up uh, looks pretty uh, bright. I would agree with that, uh, and it, uh, I was glad to see some of those seniors that don't play much on offense get some opportunities on offense during that last drive and get a couple pass completions and so on because it was senior night tonight here at Colfax. Let's take a quick look at the scoring for tonight's game. It all started off back in the first quarter on a 22-yard run by Connor Roth at, with 9.15 remaining. Extra point was no good, made the score six to nothing. Then the Vikings had the ball deep in their own territory, trying to punt it, but the snap went over Colton Hoffman's head and out of the end zone for a safety. That made the score eight to nothing, Kadat. In the second quarter, a three yard run by Warren Bovey with 8.54 remaining in the first half, made the score 14 to nothing. And then that was followed up by a 53 yard pass from Jordan Peters to Nolan Blum with 442 remaining in the half to make the score 22 to nothing, and that's what it was at halftime. In the second half, a one-yard run by Ashton Bremness with 838 to go in the third quarter made the score 30 to nothing. And then a 69-yard run 
by Easton Goodman with 5.50 to go. Made the score uh, 36 to nothing. Then a three yard run by Theo Hovde in the third quarter with 21.2 seconds left. Put the only points on the board for the Vikings tonight, making it 36 to six. And that's where it ended up. And again, we should take a moment and mention those seniors that have played their final game for the Colfax Vikings tonight. They include Eli Ralph, who we mentioned quite a few times having a nose for the ball on defense, <coughs> and Matt Dockel, Colton Hoffman, Kate Anderson, Drake Knutson, uh, Cameron Molina, and Christian Ebert. There are eight of them. Oh, Grayson Decker, I left him out of there. And uh, there are eight seniors. And so the Vikings will have to go a little bit to replace those eight. But as we've said a number of times tonight and, and lately in the season, there's some underclassmen that have really started showing the signs of stepping up. And those guys that are listed as freshmen, as far as football experience, they're technically sophomores now. And those guys that are listed as juniors on the roster, after this last game, they're now seniors. So they've got to be stepping up at this time of the year. And, and I think the future is bright for the Vikings. Yeah, I think I said that Hovde was a senior, but he's a junior. So he is going to be a big part of this team next year, and uh, he's going to have to kind of lead the, lead the team next year. And we've got a little bit of a break here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network um, since this was our final football game of the season. Holy cow, Dan. We've done two football seasons already. We did the Viking football. We did Eau Claire Cowboy football this summer. And uh, so now it's time for us to gear up and get ready for that funny shape ball. You know, the round <laughs> one that bounces on the floor. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, football players. That's basketball is the only one that counts. <laughs> <laughs> and that's coming up before too awful long. Let's take a look at that. Uh, Viking girls basketball practice is going to begin on Monday, November sixth, and the boys will begin practice on November thirteenth. Now you can follow the girls all season long on NLWN TV, beginning on November fourteenth, and the. The Vikings will host the Regis Ramblers that day. Viking pregame is going to start at 6.40 p.m. You can also follow the boys on NLWN2 beginning on November 21st when the boys host the Somerset Spartans with Viking preview beginning or, or Viking pregame beginning at 5.45 p.m. The boys and girls cross country teams are going to compete in the WIA sectional meet at Whispering Pines Golf Course in Kadat on Saturday the 21st and that gets underway at 11 a.m. On Tuesday the Viking volleyball team will begin WIAA regional tournament play when they host the Mondovi Buffaloes at 7 p.m. And the first day of practice for the Colfax Bloomer wrestling team will be on Monday, November 6th. Also, don't forget to join us on the Northern Light Webcasting Network audio service and NLWN-TV for our third annual Halloween Spooktacular featuring the very best in Halloween-themed old-time radio programs. It all starts Halloween night at 7 p.m. Tonight's Colfax High School football game has been brought to you by the Colfax Animal Hospital. Let Doctors Austin and Nikki Pritchard and their friendly staff take care of your pet. C&K Construction, your concrete experts for the Chippewa Valley. Dairy State Bank, where they're banking on relationships. Midwest Environmental Consultants, soil testers for Western Wisconsin. Anderson Bridges, who've been manufacturing prefabricated steel truss bridges since 1989. Slayton's Technology, IT provider for the Northern Light Webcasting Network. Menominee Eye and Optical, with quality, personalized care for you and your family. 
and Mom's Restaurant and Pub in Colfax Comfort Food the way Mom used to make it. Be sure to thank these fine sponsors for bringing you Colfax Viking football all season long right here on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. So for Chris Olson, who did fine camera work all season, and Dan Petchow, who's been kind of my right-hand man, left-hand, depending on the stadium that we're in, <laughs> right, <laughs> but, all season long. Yeah, this is Rick Olson. Final score once again, Kadat Hornets 36, Viking 6. You've been tuned to Viking Post Game on the Northern Light Webcasting Network and NLWN2. You've been tuned to Viking Post Game with a look back at today's Colfax Viking football game. This has been a production of the Northern Light Webcasting Network, NLWN2, along with Colfax High School. Check out our upcoming broadcast schedule at www.northernlightwebcastingnetwork.com.